All right, welcome back to the program. If you are frequent social media, if you fre frequent social media, that should be, by now you've seen a video or two of his. Whether he's giving digital marketing advice or reviewing job postings from local companies, Karen Rose is determined to equip Caribbean entrepreneurs with the digital fortitude needed to thrive in today's busy and complex world. He's joining us now for this installment of Tips Tuesday. He's a marketing e-commerce strategist, Karen Rose. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you as well, and thank you for having me. All right, so let's talk about that. If we're talking about tips, um, you know, the, the, the need for individuals to have multiple streams of income, why should we diversify when it comes to their monthly earnings? Well, I think everybody's uh, bank accounts is a good enough reason when they're looking at, you know, this the rising cost of living. Um, that's a good enough reason to start wanting to thinking about, you know, diversifying your income. But aside from that, I think that, you know, we're in a society today where, you know, around the world, you're seeing a lot of layoffs happening companies, businesses, they're all transforming so that they could run more lean and more efficient so that they, they themselves can keep up with the times. Um, it's, it's, it's a safe bet not to just rely on your one stream of income, which is typically from your job. We have many platforms and tools and ways that we can create multiple streams of income. That way you can kind of insulate yourself from just the rising cost of living. And also, you know, in the event that you are part of an organization or an industry that is looking to kind of downsize. Now, how did you get started on this? Say, say that part again? How did you get started on this? So um, one of the ways that I like to tell people to earn today is to start learning digital skills. I'm not big on um, any, anything that is a get rich quick, none of that. I think right now, if you were to jump on Google and you were to type in digital skills, you're going to see things like web development, app development, copywriting, social media manager, um, proofreader, like there's there's a laundry list of skills, um, artificial intelligence prompter. There's a lot of skills that we can learn today that would allow you to either earn jobs remotely and work for companies in various countries or even become a freelancer and get on a platform like a Fiverr or freelancer.com or tap into social media that way you can get clients from around the world. Um, and if you can learn any one of the digital skills that appeal to you, that's a great way to earn income, and you can kind of do that alongside working your nine to five job. Yeah, because I was just coming to that to ask you whether or not if you if you're not there, then you're not on the stream. If you're not uh, living in a digital world, you're not on the stream at all. Yeah, correct. Um, um, the fact that we are living in this digital world right now. Your physical presence is not needed if you learn any one of the assortment digital skills. So for me, when I got started out, um, I was a tech blogger. And because I used to work at Apple back in Canada, a couple of other uh, tech jobs, when I moved to Trinidad, the gap that I seen was in educating people about tech. So I was able to kind of create a few different streams of income just based on my knowledge around smartphones and tech. Uh, blogging about the technology uh, allowed me to earn income because I was able to bring traffic to my website and earn money through ads. I was able to get sponsorships through posts. I was able to do workshops to teach people about smartphone technology. I was able to open up a phone store. I was able to sell the products and do services for people. People, whether it be reprogramming their phones, Android boxes, just a wide variety of things. So depending on your passion and what you are looking to do, there are multiple ways you can create a multiple streams of income within a niche that you enjoy. Yeah, can I, can I ask you, 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 so you were operating, one presumes um, successfully and so on in, in Canada, you said, right? Um, wh why did you move back to Trinidad? Or, or this is just a, a, an itinerant stop, you're going you're gonna to move somewhere else again? Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's uh, that's one of the big questions that I get because I know people are always looking to move out of the Caribbean and move into the UK, the US or Canada. And I mean, um, I was born in Trinidad. Me and my mom, we left Trinidad when I was just a few months old and I came back when I was just about 28. And for me, I wanted a change of pace. What people in the islands don't don't know is that 
in a place like Canada, where there's only about 34 million people, it's relatively small compared to the, the landmass that we to have. To its size, yes. To, to its size. So what was happening for, for me and a lot of my friends is people were not able to get into their, their fields. So everybody had the education, but they could not get into their fields. So a lot of my friends started to move to various parts of the world. And when I moved to Trinidad, 10 of my friends had moved to Trinidad within that year um, for a variety of different roles and reasons. So when I moved, I still had a good bit of a good bit of friends here. And for me, I wanted a kind of a change of pace. I didn't anticipate me staying this long. But what happened was with the amount of opportunities that have opened up within the tech industries, uh, Caribbean wide, it is now more beneficial for me to be in the Caribbean as I earn a lot more money Caribbean wide than I would if I was living back in Toronto. Yeah, well, well my, my story is kind of kind of similar, well, not, not in terms of, of the money making, but I, I made a choice. I went to Toronto as well. I went to school and so on. And then, but my ambition was always to do my best work and live my best life here. So I came back again. Love it. Again, against the advice of a lot of people. <laughs> but <laughs> I could imagine. <laughs> but right. So but I, I want to go back to, to the issue. Of, if you're talking um, digital money and so we're talking uh, um, Bitcoin, that kind of stuff. And, and how do you how do we how do you help people? Um, proof themselves from whatever the, 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 the pitfalls in doing business that way. Would so be. I'm not I'm not into Bitcoin or Forex at all. That is that is I'm not involved in any of that. Um, when I talk about e-commerce, um, what I do is I help businesses, people who actually have established businesses, take their business online and learn to sell their products or services online. So let's just say you were you were a baker and you have a bakery and you're accustomed doing the traditional stuff. You're getting up in the morning, you're creating your pastries, your breads and whatnot, and you're selling physically my job as a digital strategist is how do we build how do we take your business and bring it online how are we able to now sell your goods to the entire country how do we create multiple streams of income so i'll give you a couple of examples um, one way is we know people are willing to learn how to bake so if you were to start a youtube channel and you're teaching people how to bake YouTube is the only social media platform in the Caribbean that we are allowed to monetize. So YouTube will cut you a check in U.S. dollars once you meet the minimum qualifications of 1,000 subscribers, 4,000 watch hours. You can make good money off your YouTube videos and they do direct deposits right into local Trinidad banks or cut you a check in U.S. dollars and they'll mail it out to you. If you wanted to create a recipe book, you can create a recipe book and sell it as an ebook, or you can go the additional mile create a physical book and you could sell that book on Amazon, whether it be in a digital format or whether it be in a physical book. You could then open yourself up to private classes, both in person and also virtual. So uh, my goal is how do we take your business and create multiple streams around that and then learn how to market your brand so that people can find you online when they Google Baker, when they Google Cupcakes. We want you showing up so that you can drive more traffic to your business, both virtually and physically. Well, you know, I've never really um, taken to trying to understand this before now. You know, so what you're saying is that because I hear a lot of people talking about it, uh, um, why it's, 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 it's useful and it's beneficial to, to, to get there. Uh, so you're saying you, you get money from, from, from these platforms themselves simply by the, the virtue of the number of people you, 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 whose attention you attract and then you, 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 you get um, another stream of revenue by dealing with those people directly. Yeah, correct. So if you are creating content, right? So if you're doing your YouTube videos, it works twofold. You can, if your videos are on YouTube, because YouTube is a monetized, is a monetized platform that we have uh, accessible to us here in the Caribbean, if you are getting views on your content, you're able to now get paid directly from YouTube. Let's just say if you wanted to get into something called affiliate marketing, which is essentially marketing other people's products and getting a commission. 
Um, anytime you go on a YouTube video and you look in the descriptions and you see people with links to products that they were talking about, if a baker is saying, hey, uh, this is the kitchen made or this is the this is the blender, this is the things that I use, and they're linking to those products on Amazon, they can actually generate commissions from that as well. And the more content you are creating and the more people like your content and they begin following you on your platforms, that's going to attract attention for people to want to come in and visit your physical store so that's just a that's just a snippet of how your virtual presence can directly create income but then also indirectly create income and drive traffic to your platform yeah uh, and you put an emphasis and you, you spoke about it a little earlier I want really want us to go back there the, 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 mm -hmm. the, sort of the imperative for diversifying your own portfolio yeah so you need to diversify your portfolio today because when, if you only have one form of income, right? If you're an employer, or if you're a business owner, if you only have that one form of income, um, any disruption to that stream puts you in the red or puts you, in, it, it sets you back a great deal. When you start to diversify your income, so I'll give an example of, of my own brand's ecosystem. For me, I do consulting. I do web development. I create content. I have a podcast. Um, I do sponsored posts. I do speaking engagements. I do workshops. What happens is now I'm not relying on just one form of income to generate the money that I need. I'm also not a. I'm also not waiting at the end of the month for that one form of income. When you start to diversify your portfolio, you're going to start to see that you're going to be getting paid multiple times a month. And the more you grow your brand and you build your overall digital presence and you become a trusted leader in your respective space, that's going to allow you to start to charge more or create more opportunities where you're no longer limited just to Trinidad and Tobago. So even if you're an employee and you're thinking about, uh, I need to get a raise, we know it's not that simple as just as going to your boss and asking for a raise, right? You need to start thinking about what are the things that I can do outside of my full-time job that's going to allow me to create a supplemental income. And again, it doesn't need to be anything that is a pyramid scheme or a Ponzi scheme. Start looking at digital skills, something as basic as learning how to use Canva. Every business, every entrepreneur needs to know how to create graphics for social media. You could just take your phone you could learn how to use the free version of Canva and start to approach small businesses and say, hey, I do graphics, I create videos, I create, I can create the content for your brand. And that's an easy way just utilizing your phone to create a supplemental income. Because at this point in time, if you can generate at least an additional two to 3,000 TT dollars, that's a good piece of change to start bringing in that you don't have to rely on your job to create for you. Uh, and you're speaking here principally to and about people who are now referred to as the millennials, right? You're not talking about um, people who like who you're looking at. You know, okay, so funny enough, right? Um, this is open to all ages because when I was at Apple, um, I was part of the, the iPhone team and we would be doing workshops teaching people how to use things like GarageBand, how to make music, how to edit videos, how to get the most out of their smartphones. And now Apple teaches things like uh, how to create games, how to do photography, and so much more. But the funny thing about it is, is that our morning classes was predominantly retirees who were looking to pick up a new hobby. And a lot of them started to use those skills that they've picked up as a hobby to freelance and just be able to go on a freelancing platform like a Fiverr to generate money. So age is really nothing but a number. What people have to start thinking about is you have to find a supplemental income, right? It's, no, it's not just going to be given to you. And at the rate that the world is changing and companies need to downsize, you don't want to be that person who is waiting on an opportunity to be given to, because it's just not going to happen. There are tons of things that you can learn right now at any age that you can start to do yourself. I think the key really is just to find something that you like, because even in, even as you know, you're getting into your, your, your twilight years, you know, I'm sure 
proofreading is something that might come easy for you or, or something you might find enjoyable to do. Um, and, th- and that's one of the skills that, that, get, that, that gets paid a lot on the freelancing platforms. All right, well, you just gave me an idea there, <laughs> certainly. <laughs> but thank you very much for talking with us, sir. Karen Rose, AKA the Digi Boss, and that's our Tips Tuesday segment for, for today. Thank you for Sarah. having me. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Well, we're gonna take a break, and when we come back, we talk education, what we call unleashing the mathlete in you. Stay with us. This is AM Prime here on WESN. <laughs> 